What's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Richard on Data. If this is your first time here, my name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for all kinds of content just like this, and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. This is my statistics tutorial series, where I give you all the applied statistics knowledge that you need to conquer the data science world. So if you haven't yet seen my videos on the hypothesis testing framework, as well as on p-values and p-hacking, I strongly recommend watching those videos before this one. And I'll have links to both of those in the description and cards up above. In those videos, I went through the steps that you'll take in any type of hypothesis testing problem, as well as one of the most important definitions in the whole field of statistics, and that's the p-value. Specifically, I went through what a p-value is and what it is not. Now I'm gonna walk you through some more of the most important concepts in statistics, and those are type one error, type two error, statistical power, and the lesser known type three error. Here's the definitions. The probability we make a type one error is the probability we reject H naught if H naught is actually true. And that probability is represented by the symbol alpha. The probability we make a type two error is the probability we fail to reject H naught when H naught is actually false. That's represented by beta. Then statistical power, which is related, is the probability we correctly reject H naught when H naught is false. And that's represented by one minus beta. And naturally, I have to share this hilarious image that gets floated around a lot when people talk about these definitions. So I think the working assumption that the overwhelming majority of people have is that they're not pregnant. If they have reason to doubt that, they'll go take a test, and that test will give either a positive or a negative result. So just think of not being pregnant as our null hypothesis here. On the left side here, we have the type 1 error of telling a man that they're pregnant. That obviously can't happen. On the right side, we have the type 2 error where a doctor or a test fails to classify somebody as pregnant when they very clearly and obviously are. Now, I think one of the hardest things for most people who are just getting into statistics for the first time is remembering these definitions and keeping the difference between them straight. And for a lot of people, using a table like this is pretty helpful. But personally, when I was learning these for the first time, I found it helpful to just think about these as conditional probabilities. So if you just remember that H not being true goes with type one error, well, just think about it. If H not is true, the only way we can make an error is to reject H naught. Likewise with type two error, that goes with H naught being false. The only way we can make an error there is if we fail to reject H naught. So if I just remembered that H naught being true went with type one error, that way I could figure out all the pieces of both type one error and type two error. So when I was learning this the first time, that's what worked for me, but to each their own. The other thing you have to remember is that the probability of type one error is represented by alpha, the probability of type two error is represented by beta, and as alpha increases, beta decreases, and vice versa. Then naturally, if you have beta decreasing, one minus beta, that is the statistical power, is going to increase. And then one minus alpha is the confidence level that's associated with a confidence interval, which is also something that can be used to reject or fail to reject a null hypothesis. Now let's dive a little bit more into the trade-off between the risks of type one error and type two error. You see, you actually set the type one error rate at the beginning because that's the same thing as the significance level. So you have to think about how bad is a type one error. For context, let's just suppose you're working in a clinical trial environment and you have a null hypothesis that there's no difference between some new drug and a placebo. If you reject that null hypothesis, you are claiming you have evidence that that new drug performs differently than the placebo does. Considering there's probably some extremely serious implications for saying something like that, saying that we've discovered a new drug, but then it turns out later that we're wrong, it's probably best to have as low of a type 1 error rate as possible. And it's usually the case that type 1 errors are worse than type 2 errors, but that's far from a universal rule. 
Here's the thing, if we set a higher significance level, you can kind of just think of it as making it easier for ourselves to reject the null hypothesis. And that's true whether the null is true or if it's false. So if we have a higher significance level, that's the same thing as saying we have a higher type 1 error rate, but we also have higher statistical power. But the flip side of that is true too. That is, if you have a lower significance level, you need a higher standard of evidence in order to reject the null hypothesis. So the chance you reject it, even when it's false and you should reject it, becomes lower as well. That is, you have lower statistical power. Now let's talk a little bit more about power, because that concept is a little tricky in and of itself, and almost always when people do power calculations, they will do them using some kind of software. To understand power, let's start by understanding it's related to three other quantities. That's significance level, for the reasons I described earlier, sample size, and what's known as effect size. For effect size, the most common metric for that is what's called Cohen's D, which is just a difference in means divided by a common or pooled standard deviation. You can calculate power using R or Python, and there's tons of free calculators out there that you can Google, but the most important thing is to understand the relationships. Power goes up as you increase the significance level, it goes up as you increase the sample size, and it goes up as you increase the effect size. And you won't necessarily always see power of a test being reported, but in any kind of research, as well as in clinical trial or manufacturing contexts, providing the power of the test is just really good, really thorough science, and it's just a good practice to get in the habit of reporting it. Now there are some other types of errors, although they're much more rarely discussed, and those are type 3 and even type 4 errors. There's actually a few different definitions that get floated around for the type 3 error. One common one is finding the right answer to the wrong question, but a much more specific and frequent definition of the type 3 error is rejecting the null hypothesis for the wrong reason. So let's give an example. Let's go back to my example from my previous videos where we were testing a null hypothesis that the average number of hours Americans use their phones is 3.5 hours. Let's suppose also we had an alternative hypothesis that that true mean was greater than 3.5 hours. Now let's just suppose for a second the true mean was actually 3.2 hours, but we took our sample, it was of size 50, and we got a sample mean of 4 hours and a standard deviation of 1.2 hours. We would end up rejecting the null hypothesis and concluding people actually use their phones on average for more than 3.5 hours a day, when the reality is the exact opposite. They use their phones for less than 3.5 hours per day on average, but because maybe we didn't conduct our sample in a great way, we oversampled people who use their phones a lot, and we just so happened to set up a right-sided test instead of a left-sided test. So again, we rejected the null hypothesis, which would be a correct thing to do technically, but we did it on totally false pretenses. And then the type 4 error is an even less frequently used term, but still one that you might hear floating around occasionally. And that's when you correctly reject the null hypothesis, but you make a mistake interpreting the results. At the end of the day though, the most important types of errors are by far type 1 error and type 2 error. And it's important to remember the common saying that there's no such thing as a free lunch. You decrease your risk of making one type of error, you're going to increase your risk of making the other type of error. Statistics is a giant game of probability and quantifying your uncertainty. And oftentimes, uncertainty can come in multiple forms. You've got type 1 error, you've got type 2 error, and by extension of type 2 error, you have power. So these really are some of the most important concepts in the entire field. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you'd like to support my work, the most helpful thing that you could do for me would be to share this video. Otherwise, at least consider smashing the like button, and then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.